we're continuing our look verse by verse through our Apostle Paul's book of 2 Corinthians. And what the Apostle Paul is doing now, he's showing how his ministry is different from every other ministry that these Corinthians have ever seen. Instead of showing off the so-called blessings of God, this health, wealth, prosperity gospel, the Apostle Paul showed that he was a true minister of God. He proved himself as a minister of God in those who were with him, Timotheus, Silas, and all, through their afflictions and so forth, their sufferings. Notice what he says here in chapter 6, verse number, I'm going to start at verse 4. But in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God, in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by faith unfeigned, excuse me, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for this time together. Father, we thank you for taking this, this great burden of finding a new place to, 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 to fellowship uh, into, into your, your divine providence and helping us, Father, uh, continue the work of the ministry without, without delay here at NorCal Grace. Thank you, Father, for the, for the great blessing of, of a new place. We thank you for some other things we've been praying for, for Brother Ryan and, 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 and helping him with, with those needs as well. And all the saints, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ who aren't with us today. There are many who are not here. Um, and we ask that your marvelous grace and mercy be with them until we see them again. But for those who are here and those who are watching by way of the Internet, we, we ask for your blessing upon this study. It's going to be shorter than usual and brief, but we know that the power of your word is still can be prevalent even in a, in a short, even as the 10 minutes in the word says, uh, a, a little dose of God's word is very powerful. So thank you for this time we have together. We ask you to bless in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So again, the Apostle Paul, I said last week, most of Christendom does not appreciate the Apostle Paul. Um, they, they sprinkle Paul in when it suits their need, but most of Christendom stays in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four Gospels, or the Old Testament, or the Hebrew epistles. But we as grace believers are supposed to major in Pauline epistles. That's why we go verse by verse through Paul's epistles each Sunday. It doesn't mean, uh, like on Wednesdays, uh, we'll, do, we'll, do, uh, uh, we'll do some some diving into the Old Testament or dealing with questions and so forth. But our main focus here at Northern California Grace Fellowship is to teach the grace message of God. And the only way you learn the grace message is learning from the Apostle Paul. You have to rightly divide the word of truth. Um, I was telling uh, uh, Brother Jason here, who contacted our ministry uh, yesterday, and I got back with him this morning, that we were talking about Brother Les Felder. Most of the people in my time in ministry over the years have come to know the things that differ through Brother Les Felder. I was telling him we did a conference back in Minnesota. And Les, in his, in, his, in his humility, we were talking about the heavenly places. He's old school. He's a, he's a man, an aged man in his 80s, late 80s now. And he, he thought that the body of Christ would go up in the rapture and then come back with the Lord Jesus. And at that conference, I was about 30 years old. This is about 15 years ago. And he says, you know, I learned from you, Ron, that the body of Christ is for the heavenly places. That was some humble, that was, that was humility from this aged man. And the body of Christ is a new creature who's different from the nation of Israel. And the Apostle Paul shows that the afflictions that come upon him because of this message doesn't mean that God is not approved of him. In Israel, when they suffered afflictions and necessities and distresses, it was because they were sinning against God. They were breaking his covenant, that Old Testament. So if, if, an, if Israel was in afflictions and necessities and distresses and, and had all of these looks like bad things happen, they were out of the will of God, but that's not the truth in God's grace. In fact, Paul's going to say, if you're faithful as a minister of God, there will be afflictions. There will be some suffering, the sufferings that come along with being in Christ in the mystery. But even us, just Pauline dispensationalists, we don't make enough about the Apostle Paul. I, I feel like I, I'm, I'm, we're going to change that in our ministry. I don't care about any other person's dispensational ministry. I do care. They are brethren. But I'm, I'm not in charge of their ministry. I am in charge of this one from the Lord. And my job is to teach Paul's doctrine verse by verse. And that's what we're going to do. And to today, we're going to look at the Paul the prisoner. That's our focus. 
because he suffered so much, he suffered to bonds and afflictions and imprisonments. Now, I want to show you when he says over in verse 4, last time we saw, look at verse 4, but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God, in much patience, we went over that. You can see last week's study on, on, our, uh, you, you, on our Facebook. In afflictions, we saw that. Necessities, we ended on necessities. Paul had needs. And, and some saints took care of his needs, some saints didn't. Okay, we went through all that. Particularly the Corinthians, they were slow to take care of the Apostle Paul's needs. 1 Corinthians 9, he says, They which preach the gospel should live of the gospel, just like those Jews, those Levites in the temple, those priests. Israel is bringing them their tithes and offerings, that's taking care of them. You guys are supposed to be taking care of me, the minister. That's what Paul said to these saints. And he talks about distresses. Uh, what is distress? That is anguish of the body or mind. Uh, you can have distress, be stressed out in your body. Stress hurts your body, your physical body. You know that? That's why Paul and God wants us to not to be stressed out, worried about things. Be careful for nothing, Philippians 4. And what prayer is designed to do in our six-part study on prayer, one of the things it's designed to do is to bring peace that passes all understanding. You've given it to God, as Peter says, cast your care upon him. If you can't do nothing about it anyway, I remember getting that call when sitting in Minnesota. Hey, man, you got to get out. Oh, come on. I'm not even in town, man. 30 days. Oh, boy. And then I said, cool, we're going to be back tomorrow. We can get on it. Nope. Plane, delayed, 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 canceled. When can we get out? Probably by next Thursday, next Tuesday. Well, maybe we can get you out tomorrow. Four, floor, four different flights and stuff. It was, a, it was a disaster. But what did I do? I said, I said dear... We just pray to the Lord. It's his ministry. He's going to provide. He's going to provide. We're going to, you know, we thank the Lord. And we did our part, and God did his part. And that's the way God wants it. And we didn't worry about it. Why worry? Paul says, don't be worried or be, uh, uh, have this, have this uh, anxiety or be this carefulness about it, okay? That's what God has designed the, the, the prayer to help out with. Give it to him. But there are times, because we are just flesh and blood, man, there is times where our body and mind has anguish. And the Apostle Paul went through these distressing situations. God doesn't protect us from distressing situations. He helps us through them. He helps us through them. Now, those distressing situations can be mi minimized by, by following the doctrine. Okay, Some we just bring upon ourselves. But there are going to be some, like the Apostle Paul, that come because of your faith in Christ Jesus, okay? We talked to a few churches. We emailed churches, called churches, and we got responses from churches because we said, maybe we can rent from a church because they already zoned. Well, one guy, he writes us back, we need your doctrinal statement, we need this, we need that. This, this. I said, you can stop at doctrinal statement. You ain't going to let us stay there, I can tell you that. You ain't going to let us stay there. This guy was some some denominational dude. I was like, well, as soon as he said that, I said, oh, it ain't going to happen. <laughs> that was some distress. That limited us because we, we do preach the truth of the rightly divided word, okay? All right? Well, this anguish of body and mind, uh, Paul was in constant danger. He was, he was constantly, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ in the book of Luke, chapter 21, he says, during that tribulation period, there will be distress of nations. The, the, this issue in the Middle East, what's going on, trying to seek peace in the Middle East and all the stuff between uh, the Muslims and Jews, it's going to get to a point where all the nations are going to be distressed because of that situation and the threat of nuclear warfare, which we can even see today. That issue of uh, Paul was in that constant anguish. He was, he was under attack. Many times in the book of Acts, people tried to kill the Apostle Paul. Men, 40 men took a vow that they would not eat or drink until they murdered the Apostle Paul. Wonder how that happened. God got them out of that. You think they ate and drank? Yeah, they did. They broke their, they broke their vow. I know they didn't die because they, did, they didn't kill the Apostle Paul. God saved them. The point is, he was under this constant anguish and distress of the fact that people were out to get him. Not because he did anything wrong, but because he was doing the right thing preaching the truth, okay? And that's what happened to him. Look what he says in the next verse. He says, in stripes, in imprisonments. 
Now I'm going to talk to you about stripes and imprisonments in the time we have left, about 20 minutes. This issue of stripes, uh, what's a stripe? It was a stroke made with a lash or a whip or a rod. So they would, they would, they would hit the body, hit the body uh, with a whip or a hard uh, metal rod. Sometimes they used straps or a scourge where they had leather straps and they would put uh, metal, sharp metal. That's how they beat the Lord Jesus Christ, the Romans. They were very cruel and beat him with stripes. Yeah. Now, stripes are made for a fool's back, it says in, in the scriptures. There was a use for it in the nation of Israel. Let me show you that. Uh, go back to Deuteronomy chapter 25. Um, you know, I tell people all the time, you ever notice that we talk about prisons and prison reform. Brother Larry was a correction officer at, uh, in prisons here in California. And uh, he wouldn't have had a job. He wouldn't have had that job if he was an Israeli in the Old Testament. Because God didn't need prisons for the nation of Israel. You ever notice that? They never had a project, a building project where they were building prisons in the nation of Israel. They didn't need them. Because the way God's law was, if you did something worthy of death, you didn't go to death row for murder or for this, that, and the other. You were put to death. And if you, were, if you didn't do anything worthy of death, you would get stripes or you would pay some type of fine. If you stole someone's lamb, you, you had to give them five times that. Or if, you, if you come to your senses four times, God, God just put still. He stops having people steal because if you got caught, you would have to replace the, the value four to five times and so forth. One of the things, if, 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 if you did a, a crime, instead of just putting you in jail for that minor crime, they will give what he call sh stripes, whipping. There are some nations that still do it. Yeah. Cambodia and some, other and some other Asian nations where they'll just do public canings, right, Singapore, Ryan? Yeah. Right. Singapore, that's the one I was thinking about. Brazil, in, in some Muslim countries, if you steal, they cut your hand yeah. off. Yeah. Um, I remember this young American boy went over to one of these countries. It might have been uh, Cambodia or Singapore, somewhere in Asia. And uh, he did something, and they gave him a public caning. He learned a lesson. He said, boy, they don't do that in America. They ought to. Put your stop to it. But I want to show you something. God had in the law this issue of public, it was like a public strike uh, uh, beating, really what it was. Uh, notice what it says. Uh, Deuteronomy 25, verse 1. Deut Deuteronomy 25 and verse 1. If there be a controversy between men and they come unto the judgment. This was actually in the law of Moses. And the judges may that the judges may judge them. Then they shall justify the righteous and condemn the wicked. That's what law righteous judges do. They justify the righteous, they condemn the wicked, but they make the victim whole. Our legal system, there's no justice system in America. It's a legal system. They don't make the victims whole anymore, okay? But you made whole. You justify the righteous, condemn the wicked. Verse 2, and it shall be if the wicked man be worthy to be beaten, then the judge shall cause him to lie down and to be beaten before his face according to his fault by a certain number. There were certain numbers. That's right, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings. There you go. There you go. Gee, I love the Lord. There you go. Uh-huh. That's right. I can't compete with a child. No, no. He's more innocent than me, you know. But he says, you, you, he, he lied down before the judge's face according to his fault by a certain number. So this was actually in the law. The judge would say, okay, here's the penalty. Every, it'll be a public beating. Verse number three. Forty stripes he may give him. How many? Forty. And not exceed. So God put a limitation because the human body is frail and 40 lashes. That's a long time. Just take a belt when you get home and hit the mattress 40 times. Your arm will be tired. Don't you do it, Dodie. I don't, don't want you to put, get that up. Some of my senior ladies just doing that once. They go, oh, Ron, I got to go to the hospital. Don't do it, though. But I'm going to tell you, even as strong as my arm is, if I did that 40 times, it would hurt. So that's a lot. And that would be for the for the for the greatest crime under that statute. Verse th three, 40 stripes he may give him and not exceed, lest if he should exceed that 40 stripes and beat him above these with many stripes, then thy brother should seem what? Vile unto thee. 
That's the type of beating the Lord Jesus Christ endured under the Romans, way over 40. But you know what? The Apostle Paul was beating like, was beaten that, like that. Go over back to 2 Corinthians. This time, go to chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Our Apostle Paul was beaten that way. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, as he goes through again with them proving his apostleship by his sufferings for Christ's sake, he says this in verse 23. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 23. He says, are they ministers of Christ? Speaking of these, these other men who were trying to exalt themselves over Paul, are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. He didn't want to have to talk about himself, but he did for these people. He says, I speak a fool. I am more. How, he, how is he more of a minister of Christ? In labors more what? Abundant. He labored more abundantly than them all, he says in 1 Corinthians 15. In stripes, you see where we talk about those beatings? Above measure. In prisons, more frequent. He said, take all the time they went to being in prison for the Lord's sake. I was more. Peter and them guys went to prison. Peter, James, all those guys in the book of Acts, they went to prison, but not more than the Apostle Paul. In prisons, excuse me, in stripes above measure, verse 23, in prisons more frequent, in deaths oft. He talks about that issue of, of I die daily and all that in 1 Corinthians 15. Think about something. Verse 24, he says, of the Jew by the way, let me tell you something. In that issue of death, oh, I don't know this issue, but here's my, here's my speculation just from studying Paul. There were times where Paul was stoned to death. There was a time, Acts 14. It's not recorded. Not everything in his life was recorded. But what if that death oh, simply means like, just like in Acts 14, they stoned him to death and God raised him up. What if that happened multiple times? It could have. It, it could have. I mean, that's what, you know, sometimes death is used in another way. He talked about I died daily and stuff. But you can't say it didn't, because look at the stuff. He's talking about stuff that happened to his physical body. Not spirit. This is his physical body. We saw it in Acts 14. It could have very well happened more times that God didn't record for us in Scripture. We could see the Apostle Paul say, how many times you died? Man, I died five times. Five is the number of death. <laughs> and God raised me up five times <laughs> by his grace. Okay, but notice what it says in verse 24. Of the Jews, if I'm talking fast, it's because I got 15 minutes. Of the Jews, five times. That's why I say he probably died five times. Five times the number of death received I 40 stripes save one. By the way, how many is that? 39. Bible numerics, 39 equals three times 13. 13 is the number of rebellion. Three is the number complete. And what they would do is saying that's complete rebellion. This was short of death in Israel. You, we, we're going we're gonna to beat you with this, with this rod or with this, with this strap 39 times. I guarantee you the Lord Jesus Christ got, got hit more times than that by the Roman soldiers. He, he became a curse. So notice what he said, verse 25. Trice was I beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Trice, trice means three times. Beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. I'm not talking about on, on, some, on some chemicals. <laughs> stoned I means stoned to death. Deuteron right there, he's saying like he only got stoned once. Yeah, but when he says in depths off, it could have been other depths, you know, tacked with swords, all, just all type of stuff. But yeah, it looks like once I. By the way, by the way, by the way, that's to this. That's to this point in his life. This is an early epistle, Richard. Oh, okay. He's only into his ministry probably within 15, 20 years. This is an early epistle. We don't know what happened towards the end of his life. You know what I mean? Yeah. But here he says, yes, once I was stoned. Uh, by the way, Deuteronomy 13.10 says you stone him to, with stones that he dies. Okay. Trice I suffered shipwreck. A night and day I have been in the deep. Okay. And then we're going to see when we get to this passage in our study more and more of these sufferings. Okay. But with the, with the time we have left, I want to deal with this issue of prison. Go back to uh, 2 Corinthians 6. Look at verse 5. Notice he says, in stripes, those beatings. We know at least five times he received 39. By the way, when Paul says, I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the book of Galatians, if you got beat with 39 stripes, it would, you would have scars all over you. Mm -hmm. Multiply that by five times, how, how he's scarred up. When Paul says, 
I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, look at my body and the beatings I've, I've endured for the Lord's sake. One of the reasons why God allowed beatings in Israel is so that you can have scars for life. And when you looked at a person going down the street, says, what are those scars from? Well, back in four or five years ago, I did this against God. It, it, it stayed with him his whole life. Paul's referring for God, though, right? Hmm? Paul's, Paul's is for God. God. That's right. We're going to see that. He might even carry on into his glorified body, just like the Lord Jesus Christ. Very much so. Great point. How the Lord Jesus Christ, his glorious body, still has mark, the marks of Calvary. Very well, the Apostle Paul could too, because he took all of those strikes. When he says in Galatians, I bear in my body the marks of the Lord, it's not some crazy Catholic stigmata where they have like, oh, look, we got the, we got the piercings and stuff. No, no, no. It was beatings and stuff. And, and if you look at 39 stripes times five, at least by this time, his body was all scarred up. And people say, in Israel, they say, well, why is your body scarred up? Well, I, I stole, I did this, I did this, whatever. Whatever the penalty was, whatever the, the crime was. With Paul, like Ryan said, Paul would say, I'm scarred up because for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake. They say, you took that punishment for the Lord? Yes. When he says, go over to, oh boy. Sometimes, man, I don't have enough time. Go, with it, go to Colossians 1. Y'all are going to miss out today, but come back next week. I'm going to be here till 7 o'clock at night. I'm not leaving. I'm making a mirror. Kick me out. <laughs> if you're going to kick us out next week, out, we gonna, I'm going to stay here all night, okay? <laughs> but there's something that the Apostle Paul says in verse number 24. Colossians 1, 24. I'm just talking a little fast because i got 10 minutes. Colossians 1, 24. By the way, just because I have to go today, you guys stay, talk amongst yourselves, saints. Uh, meet, meet with uh, Jessica and Jason over there. Uh, show them the grace of, of our assembly. Uh, I just, this is just a special occasion. I have to go. But uh, I want everybody back next week. We're going we're gonna to finish this up. I just got only about 10 minutes. But I want you to see Colossians 1.24. Paul says, who now rejoice in my sufferings for you. That's for the body. But this part, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in what? My flesh. The apostle Paul took all of that affliction upon his own flesh. And so those beatings he took, those beatings he took were because men hate the Lord Jesus Christ. And because all the beating on Christ has been done at Calvary or before his pat during his passion, and you can't beat up on the Lord anymore. What they do is they beat up on the person closest to the Lord, and that was the Apostle Paul. He took it in his own, but he was, he was rejoicing in that because he knows it was going to lead to glory. Christ means suffering with glory. And so when Paul uses that term Christ or Christ Jesus, it means suffering in glory. Now, go back to 2 Corinthians, this issue of imprisons, imprisons off, imprisonments. Uh, look at chapter 6, verse 5, 2 Corinthians 6, 5. He says, in stripes, in imprisonments. Now, prison. In the Bible, prison was to, I'm, I'm going to let the word say it. Go to the book of Psalm. Go back to Psalm chapter 69. I'm sorry. Psalm chapter 79, Psalm 79. We only, gonna have, we only got enough time for a few verses here because I have to get to her play by one. But, and I started off, not like I'm in the middle of the thing after an intermission. Crazy. But hey, that's my little girl. Listen, we can get a lot, a lot in this next few minutes. What is prison? When he says imprisonments, or he calls himself, we're going to see the prisoner of Jesus Christ. What does that mean? Well, in the Bible, what prison was designed for. Now, and I want you to see something. When, when Israel is going to sin against God, and the Psalms is a look not only at the contemporary of David's life, but what it's a futuristic look of what's going to happen to the tribulation saint in Israel. And because the Gentiles dominate them, Gentiles have prisons. That's why we have prisons. The, 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 the Egyptians, the Assyrians, the uh, Medes and Persians, the Greeks, all, all these Gentile powers that, that came over Israel in their, in their disobedience to God's word, they had prisons. And when you were a Jew in prison, just like think about in recent time Nazi Germany, 
if you were in, went to one of those prison camps, you wasn't coming out there. You're going to get gassed. And that's what happened. Well, that's the type of thing they're thinking about when it talks about prison here. Notice what he says about the prisoner. Look at Psalm 79, verse 11. Psalm 79, verse 11. The psalmist says, let the sign of the prisoner come before thee. He's talking to the Lord. According to the greatness of thy power, preserve those that are what? Appointed to what? Die. And what prison was designed to do, it was a holding place for you to die, to be executed. So when Paul says a prisoner, he's just not saying, man, I'm going to do my time. I'm going to do my 10, 15 years. I'm going to be out the joint. You ever, you know who Tracy Morgan is? Yeah. The comedian? Yeah. He got that thing called The Last OG. I never seen that. Oh, his, his fool get out in Brooklyn. He get, <laughs> it's the cra he's crazy. He's like, yeah, man, I did my time. It's everything. You'll, you'll. He talking about this woman that, you know, he was in there. She's writing them notes, but he get out and she come looking for him. Oh, it was crazy. Yeah, crazy. But uh, it's like old school uh, stuff, you know, about he yeah. just got out to join after 20 years with selling drugs. But notice that ain't this. You just do your time. You're about to get out. Uh uh. You ain't putting you ain't counting down your, your days. They ain't give you a day. They didn't say, OK, you're in prison till 2020 on this day. Mm -mm. You went in there appointed to die. Let me show you another. One. Look at Psalm 102. So when Paul. He's not saying I'm just sitting here, you know, chilling, doing things. No, 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 no. He, there was every day he worried about whether he's going to die that day. Not worried, but he, he wondered if he's going to die that day. Look at Psalm 102, verse 20. Psalm 102 and verse 20. Start at verse 19, praising the Lord. For he, he, for he hath looked down from the height of his sanctuary. Talking about heaven. From heaven did the Lord behold the earth. Remember, we did that study on his sanctuary there in the cloud, in the clouds. Now, notice, what does God looking down to do? To hear the groaning of the prisoner, to loose those that are appointed to what? In prison back then, you were appointed to death. That's why the Lord Jesus, the part of the good news of the gospel of the kingdom was to set the captives free. Because they were about, they were appointed to die. There was an appointment for death. You went into one of these Gentile prisons or these uh, heathen prisons, it was to put you to death. And it's in that light that Paul, our apostle, uh, uh, go, to, go to Psalm, keep, keep Psalm 69. I'm going to squeeze in three verses. Go to Psalm 69. Now, y'all know, I go an hour, so go to half an hour. I feel like, man, it just go like that, man. So it's, it's, it's upsetting my heart, but I got I to gotta take care of some stuff. Uh, get Psalm 69 in your hand. Now just hold that there. I want us to look at a couple of verses before we end. Go to Ephesians chapter 3. I did tell a direct. I said, now you know I do work on Sunday, so uh, you're just going to have to wait for me. Ephesians chapter number 3. I want to just show you something. And we're going to pick this up next week. Make sure you're here because I'm going to have the whole hour, and then we're going to have the Q&A. We're going to get into this. But notice how Paul, in his latter epistles, describes himself. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 1. For this cause, I, Paul, the what? The prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. And he goes on to explain the dispensation of the grace of God. Okay? Go over to chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4. You think this issue of being a prisoner is important to the apostle? If Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. Notice, Paul now sees himself as the prisoner of Jesus Christ. Paul the prisoner, but of Jesus Christ, the prisoner of the Lord, the righteous judge. Why now in his latter years does he begin to make that his identity? Okay, we're going we're gonna to delve into that next week, but... Go over to, well, be, well beyond the, the stripes of this part, there's something deeper in this issue of being the prisoner of the Lord, the prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're gonna, that's what we're going to delve into next week. Um, you got that Psalm passage? Go to Psalm 69. Look at verse 33. I got four minutes, so I'm going to squeeze in a couple verses. <laughs> I love this. Next week, we're going to look at the book of Acts when Paul and Silas in Acts 16 they go into the Philippian jail and what happened? But notice this right here. 
verse 32, Psalm 69, 32. The humble shall see this, speaking of the Lord's blessing, and be glad, and your heart shall live that seek God. For the Lord heareth the poor and despiseth not his what? See, when Paul calls himself a prisoner of the Lord, he knows that the Lord, the righteous judge, sees that he's suffering even unto bonds, and he knows that Paul is doing it for his sake. Later in 2 Corinthians 6, Paul says, unknown yet well known. And you say, what does that mean, unknown but well known? What do you mean? Uh huh. It's like, it's kind of weird. We're going to look at that. Because he might be unknown in the big scheme of what mankind is doing, but he was well known by God, the Lord. The Lord heareth the poor, he despises not his prisoner. A couple of verses before I have to go. I want you guys, you guys can hang. Uh, look at 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Shrek's father going to have less pain on today, I'm going to tell you that. Okay. Second, Second Timothy chapter 1. Notice what Paul says to Timothy about his ministry. This is the last book he wrote. Second Timothy chapter number 1. Verse number 8. I love this. I love this. Second Timothy 1, 8. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. That's the message of the mystery. That's the message. But it's not all just about the message. You know, there's the rest of that verse. Nor of me, his what? Prisoner. Why did Paul refer to himself as the prisoner of the Lord to Timothy? Well, look at the rest of that verse. But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. That power of God is God's grace. And what Paul is telling Timothy, Timothy, just like me, and you're in my footstep, you may have to take on that same suffering. Now, Timothy might not have. Uh, I don't think any man in the last couple thousand years in the body has suffered like the Apostle Paul. There's some reasons I'll go into tomorrow, next, next week. But he's telling them, be willing. Be, and he goes on, call that the appearing, verse number 10, uh, excuse me, verse number 9, who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works. Uh, Brother Jason and I was on the phone this morning at 9.15 talking about how people, you can't find a church that won't focus on works as, as some type of working in order to, to, to be saved or to stay saved, the pure grace of God. Notice, but according to his own purpose and grace, which, he, which was given us in Christ Jesus, put Christ first, to, has to do with his cross work before the world began. That's the mystery. But now is made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the road to Damascus, appearing, who hath abolished death, and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. What gospel is that? Not the gospel of the kingdom, not the one in Galatians the, of the uh, circumcision given to Peter, but the gospel of the uncircumcision given to the apostle Paul, the gospel of our salvation. That's the gospel of grace. Verse 11, whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. That's our gospel. And Paul, in these latter epistles, go over to Philemon, Go over to Philemon, the, the, uh, over two books to Philemon, the last book there of Paul. At the end of his life, he just starts it like, you know who I am. I'm the prisoner of Jesus Christ. He, he took that, I, I was going to say proudly, but we don't, that's not our, he, he was pleased. When he says boldly, he was daring. He, he, was, he, he, he was open about it. He says, listen, notice how he starts it. Paul a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, and to Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow. Paul began these, th this book, the last book of his epistles, by saying, I'm the prisoner of Jesus Christ. And next week, we're going to delve into the Paul the prisoner because there was something special about the fact that he was willing to be the prisoner of Jesus Christ. He understood what suffering for the Lord's sake was, and he just... I, he, he took it, he took, he wore it as a medal of honor, man. A badge of honor, a badge of honor. Because if you say you're the prisoner of Jesus Christ, people are going to say, what are you in prison for? You're going to say, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> He's going to be happy to tell. Because that's what's like, hey man, what were you, they say, what you in for? Or what were you in for? That was the greatest thing for the Apostle Paul. Don't get me started. Yeah, he'll say, don't get me started. You want to know? You want to know? Let's take a seat. And then he just started the road to Damascus. That's what he always do. He started on the road to Damascus and just give you his whole life. I have to go.
Sorry, saints. Love you guys. Trust the Lord Jesus Christ. Next week, we'll have our hour study and hours of Q&A. It'll be our last Sunday here. Be in prayer for us. I got to go take care of my little baby girl. She needs our daddy. I do. I'm about to put it on there in a moment, okay? All right. God's grace and peace. Brother Ron.